See, R and D guys do R and D, and if it works, I don't, I don't see them because <laughs> it worked, right? Uh, but if they if they're developing something and they start to have some problems, you know, a typical example might be a clutch mechanism. So they basically design these clutch mechanisms. They put them on dynamometers to test them, and if they start to get noise or they don't get the right friction or whatever it is they're after, then they'll bring them to me and they'll say, "Okay, this one worked. This one didn't. Tell me what you can see." So really, it generally starts with a problem. What typically happens, I'll get a phone call. Someone calls me and says, hey, I was referred to you by so-and-so, I've got a problem, right? The problem could be anything, like maybe my brakes are making noise or they're not making noise, okay? So the first question you usually ask is actually what I call the scale of interaction. What, when you say it's making noise or it's not making noise, do you know where the noise is coming from? Is it indeed the brake pads engaging on the brake or is something vibrating something else? Because if it's something vibrating something else, it's probably not related to my stuff. It might be a structural problem, right? So we got to deal with what I call the scale of interaction. Once we get it down to that, yeah, this noise is emanating from something like two parts coming together, then it's a question of, well, what's the size of the parts that are coming together? Can I even measure those parts? Or can we cut a piece of the part away? Um, or if we have to make what we call a replica of the part, where we actually make an impression of the part and measure it. Uh, so a brake rotor on a typical car is pretty much the biggest thing I want to deal with. Even truck rotors, can, like an F-150 truck rotor, can get pretty big and it's not that easy to deal with. Um, and so that kind of gives you a feel of the size of the part. Uh, but like I say, most of the time the, the tribology problem you're dealing with is acting over a small size. So once you've narrowed it down to the interacting components, now it's a question of, okay, can I position the parts in such a way that I can measure them, looking for the surface texture differences between them. For the most part, uh, the instrumentation we have from Bruker can handle pretty much any material. It could be highly reflecting, it could be dull finish. I can, I can measure you know, black rubber surfaces uh, with a little bit of patience and you can get a really good measurement of that surface texture. So usually most materials we can measure. Uh, the only other thing to watch out for is if the material is composed of any multi-layers of films that are somewhat transparent, then that can cause some trouble since we're using an optical instrument the light kind of goes through those transparent films and cause some problems. So you have to be a little bit uh, aware of that. Other than that, as long as it can fit under a microscope, that's why I usually say to customers, if I can put it, if you can look at it under a microscope, I can probably measure it. And once I can measure it, then it's a question of understanding what the potential mechanism is of failure or problem. If it's a noise issue, if it's a wear issue, if it's a leakage issue, if it's an appearance issue, you know, what is the actual issue? How do they describe it? I have a, what's called a uh, Bruker NP Flex, which is a 3D optical profiler, which allows measurement of large parts and small parts, both in very smooth situations, like a super polished mirror, all the way up to a very rough part, like maybe a, a brake rotor or something that's been shot blasted. Um, that's the one instrument I use for surface metrology. And then together with Bruker, we've set up a lab which has a Bruker UMT, which is a universal mechanical tester, which allows the measurement of friction and wear of components by rubbing them together in different configurations, be it a pin on disc, four ball test, or whatever kind of configuration you want. So throughout the year, the Bruker people and their experts are here demonstrating the machine and doing projects for people, um, as well as developing applications for different people in the auto industry.